Okay. Um, congratulate Duke on the win. I thought they played very well. Um, you know, they had great energy and intensity. Uh, they executed. Uh, you know, clearly they were better tonight. Um, obviously, want to apologize for what happened. We've, we've dealt with that, and you know, David feels terrible. Um, so we, you know, glad that Wendell is fine, and that's the last thing that we want to have happen uh, in a game like this. But again, give it, give them credit. Their kids uh, just played very good basketball, and uh, you know we struggled. I thought at times to guard them in the second half. I thought we wore down. Uh, they just physically overpowered us at times, uh, and you know we didn't have a good night shooting the ball. Our guards, you know, we made threes when we beat them, or excuse me, when we fought them at their place. Uh, but here we just we didn't make we didn't make shots, um, and then that put more pressure on us, and they. They just executed very well down the stretch uh, in the second half. We had two good runs to get it to six, had the building going, and we just weren't strong enough defensively uh, to keep the game close. Uh, having David come and apologize to Coach K before he left the court, did you kind of try to use that as like a teaching moment for him? Yeah, absolutely. Obviously, you know, we take a lot of pride in how we do things in our program, mm -hmm. uh, from how we play to who we are on and off the court. Um, and so it was certainly a situation. The ironic thing is the same play happened to David in the game against North Carolina. He got fouled hard and there was a flagrant one. And so, I mean, he just had that happen to him. And I thought he, I thought he got hurt. Um, so he was, you know, very emotional with it. You know, he's a very competitive player. And uh, I think he thought he got fouled on the, on the play down there. And so he's fighting like crazy to get back into play. And then he makes the wrong play. Um, but you know, we have a lot of respect for Coach K and Duke and their program. And the last thing we're trying to do is hurt anybody. Um, and it's just the right thing to do is to take him over there and make sure since he's leaving the court that he has to stand up and apologize himself. So uh, that's why we did it. Brad, I know that you think that the team talked about just letting guys go sometimes when they have that kind of opportunity. What would they do this is kind of what happened? Like well, we haven't talked about it a lot. I mean, I, you know, I know from talking to Ben that he's already put something out some sort of social media apologizing the kid did it during the game like he he feels awful you know not only does he make a bad play that you know uh, puts somebody in danger but he also isn't there for our team so like if you're his teammate you know we don't have him for the last 26 minutes and now we need him like we need him to guard Trevor Keels and Griffin and the big body guys we're out there with our little guards and guys like that it's a problem so you know he needed he apologized to our team too for letting us down so um but it's a teaching moment it happens i don't want that to be the story of the game the story of the game should be how well duke played duke played very well tonight their kids deserve credit for their execution and preparation and and all their their uh hard work and in a tough environment they came in and played very good basketball and uh you know pulled away from us in the last 10 minutes and you've said several times throughout the season that Clamping down defensively at key yeah. times has been a problem yep. for your guys. You're playing a team like Duke is even more. Yeah, it is. They're physically, they're so much bigger. And then obviously when you don't have David out there, it's another body. And we're just, you know, we're short right now. We've got Hunter hurt and, and you lose David and, and you know, and then you're going against that kind of talent and execution. And they're playing at a high level, playing with confidence, getting the ball where they want it. And, you know, physically you wear down a little bit. I thought, you know, we had a couple guys that looked tired. And, I, you know, I called a timeout one time. I thought we were just exhausted. Um, but that hasn't been a strength of ours. Um, you know, we, we've got to be better defensively in games uh, to give ourselves a chance to win, especially against the top teams in our league. How do you keep your team's head in the game, being that they got a tough game to turn around here and play in another 48 hours? Yeah, it's hard. Um, you know, the, the, the North Carolina loss was a gut punch. I mean, you, you know, you're – Playing those guys head up, you got a chance to win the game, and you lose on a, you know, on a last play or whatnot, and then um, you know, you turn around, got to play. It's hard. Uh, you know, it's as much. There's an emotional part of it that is draining for the kids, as much as just like you're physically tired. Uh, it's just. But now I, I would tell you that the crowd tonight played a huge part in getting our guys back energized and ready to go. Yesterday was a very tough day for our team. It was a hard day to practice. It was a hard day to, to be focused on Duke. Uh, we did the best we could. I thought we, we had some good meetings and we walked through some things and did about 30 minutes of work on the court. 
uh, and then we had a good shoot around. Uh, but, you know, you're always worried about that, the energy, but the energy level was great in the building. We had an unbelievable turnout and that helped tremendously. Uh, we just couldn't sustain it. Uh, you got to play well to sustain it. And, you know, when you're missing shots, you, you know, natural let down, um, you know, only had six turnovers. So it wasn't like we didn't execute some things, but, you know, we, we didn't make shots and obviously Duke had something to do with that. Uh, but, you know, it, it wasn't like our guys weren't trying or executing some things. You, you got to finish some plays and we weren't able to do that tonight. Well, I thought he rebounded the ball very well. He had 10 defensive rebounds, you know, and that's something he has good hands. He's a strong kid. Um, this is a benefit of Hunter's injury as he's getting more time. And, uh, you know, we need him to, to continue to play with confidence offensively. He's, he's, he's better than he played offensively tonight. He needed to be a little more aggressive and go make some plays. Um, that's part we've got to coach him uh, and encourage him to, to believe in himself and his game. Uh, but, you know, in terms of physically holding up, I thought he held up pretty well. He's, he's going against Banchero. You know, I mean, you look at him and there's three inches difference and 25 pounds. And, uh, but he was able, if he got inside position, to, to get the defensive rebound. And, uh, you know, he's got good strength and, and uh, good hands, and he's going to be a good player for us. What's your relationship been like with Coach K over the years? This is his last time coming to the yeah. building. Uh, what he's been through the college Yeah, I mean, I, we're not close personally at all, but I have a ton of respect for what he's done, and not only at Duke, but, you know, how he's tried to help college basketball. Uh, he's been an advocate for our, our sport, uh, you know, and when you sit in meetings, with him for 12 years, like I have in ACC meetings, and you you just listen to him talk. You know he's he's very forward thinking. He's very smart. It's easy to understand why he's so good. Um, you know, and that part of it is impressive. And then as a guy who loves basketball, you know it's fun for me as a junkie to to watch him preparation wise, right? See what they do with his team, you know, and then try to prepare to to stop it. Um, and then watch how he does things against other teams. So that part of it as a basketball guy is fun, but uh, just a ton of respect, like like you know most people in the, in uh, college basketball for all he's done for our game. Okay. Hope he stays involved too. By the way, I hope he doesn't he gets involved at the national level. What went into the decision to I guess honor him before the game and then do the, uh, the donation to the MLK Center? Um, yeah, I, I talked with Graham Neff, our athletic director, about what you know, what we thought we needed to do. And, and I know he called around and talked to some other folks in the league. I'm sure several of the ADs spoke and I don't know what every school did, but uh, I think this is something that a couple of schools have done for sure. I thought it was appropriate. So I don't think we needed to get him like a Clemson chair or a chair or something like that. Maybe he, he's fine. I don't think coach plays a lot of golf, I don't think. So we will give him a baseball bat. Yeah. Anybody else? Coach, oh. your backcourt's been shooting 30% from the floor since the Hunter Pelicans injury. Is this just a slump or a sign of a bigger issue? Uh, I think, I hope it's just a slump. You know what I mean? I think you have situations where guys are um, struggling at times. You just go through periods where, you know, you're making some, you're missing some. You know, Al bet made a bunch the other night. Um, I think Alex hit a couple. Uh, so it's just, you know, and some of it's a product of good defense. You know, I think, you know, there are some things that change within a scouting report. When you lose a good player, there's a little more emphasis on other guys. And obviously that, that could be happening as well. But we got a lot of confidence in our players. They're, they put time in the gym. They work really hard at it. So we'll be fine. Okay. Thanks, Thanks everybody. Appreciate it.